Close your eyes. Imagine you're a pregnant mother. You're a first time mom and all of this is very new to you. You constantly hear from friends and family on what you should and shouldn't do to have a healthy pregnancy. You read books, you get articles, you download apps, you're trying hard, you really are. You sit at work and wonder, how is my life going to change once the baby is here? Will I have the same role? Will I have my career progression? Has all of these years of hard work been for nothing? There are days you question your identity. Who are you anymore? Are you just a body with a child? Or is there more to you? You visit your healthcare provider and you're afraid to ask questions because you feel judged. You feel like they don't listen to you. You constantly wonder if you're doing right by your child. All of this just gets so overwhelming that some days you just want to break down. And there are other days when all you want to do is scream. Open your eyes. Some of you might feel a slight chill or a bit of a flush on the face. That's your body releasing cortisol, the stress hormone. Yes, stress has a physical effect on us. Take a deep breath and relax. You'll instantly feel better. I just voiced out the feelings of a regular low-risk pregnant mother. These feelings are amplified for women with financial challenges, relationship issues, cultural boundaries, or a lack of autonomy over their own bodies. Did you know how many women face challenges in pregnancy? It's a very easy number to remember. Everyone, every single mother faces challenges during pregnancy of varying natures and degrees, but challenges nevertheless. And with these challenges comes stress. Stress. It's a word we use very often, right? We say, I'm so stressed. My job is so stressful. My life is so stressful. We all say that. But what do we actually mean by it? Putting it very simply, stress is a feeling of discomfort that we feel when something external to us triggers feelings of anxiety, threat, or fear within us. And when our body feels stressed, we release stress hormones, which then go on to have physical effects like trouble with digestion, difficulty thinking, making decisions, or an increase in heart rate. Now, depending on our individual body's resilience to this, it also puts us at risk for a variety of illnesses. Now, mind you, low levels of stress are actually good for us. They've played a very important role in evolution and it helps us get on with our daily lives. But it needs to stay low. Over the last six and a half years, I've been working with moms during and after pregnancy. And the topic of stress in pregnancy has always intrigued me and I went on to do a PhD on it, which is what I'm going to talk to you today about. So the interesting question is, why should we do something about this? Why should you and I do something about this? Here is why. Exposure to prenatal stress puts the mom at risk for a variety of pregnancy complications, some of them being preterm birth, so the baby comes out a lot earlier than it should. Preeclampsia, a potentially fatal pregnancy complication that's linked to high blood pressure. An increased fear of childbirth. Prolonged labor, so the mom is in labor for a lot longer than she otherwise would. And elective cesarean sections. Now, all of these have short and long-term physical and emotional repercussions for the mother and by virtue of that on the baby and the family. Now, even if none of these happen, a mom's experience of pregnancy and childbirth lasts a lifetime. Ask any mom and she'll vouch for that. Now, this experience can either be empowering and she can feel strong, or it can be traumatizing. Moving on to the baby, apart from the risks of being born earlier than you know, it should, it also puts them at risk for developing behavioral disorders as they grow up. 
they spend significantly less time awake and alert like babies should and more time crying. The most worrying thing that research has shown us is that these babies also have an incidence to be born with a low resilience to stress. Now, what does that look like? What does a generation of infants with low resilience to stress look like? As they grow up, start going to school, they'll struggle to cope with the regular low-level good stresses of life which come with learning, performance in exams, peer pressure. It continues as they grow up. It affects the universities they go into, the choice of subjects they take up, the professions they enter, their productivity at work, the amount of money they earn, and how our society functions. So what I'm really trying to say here is that half of our existing society and workforce and all of our future society and workforce are in some ways dependent on how we treat our pregnant mothers today. And this is why you and I, we need to do something about this. Around now is when I get a very common question from moms. They say, Anjali, life is hard. Of course I'm stressed. Does this mean I'm a bad mother? No, it doesn't. In life, there are always uncontrollables and controllables. Now, the uncontrollables, take the pandemic, for example. The last 18 months has been miserable for all of us, and there's nothing any of us could do about it. However, there are always controllables, like the environment around us, the people we surround ourselves with. That is in our control. On that note, I want to turn your attention to the word motherhood. Now, I'm standing here in front of you, and if I tell you, you know what, I'm really looking forward to going on the journey of motherhood. And I leave it at that for a few seconds. I can bet that one of two images will form in your mind. Me, looking down and smiling at a baby bump like those maternity photo shoots, or me, with the baby in my arms. Join me to reframe how we visualize motherhood. Giving birth is not an exclusionary task. Then why do we always think of a pregnant mother or a mother with a baby when we think of motherhood? For a woman to enjoy her motherhood, including safe motherhood, it requires a partnership of her partner, her family, her peers, her workplace, her community, and her health service system. Now that is what motherhood needs to be visualized as. I want to tell you a small story. It's about a woman named Maya. She's seven months pregnant, and it's her first time. Let me take you through a very small snippet of her life. Maya wakes up in the morning, packs lunch, and heads to work. She has a really busy day ahead, but it doesn't faze her. Her boss has given her the freedom to shift appointments as and when needed. They've given her the, they've, sorry, they've spoken to her about how they can physically and emotionally support her during pregnancy and after she comes back. All of this makes her so excited and a lot more productive at work because she's confident that her career is not gonna get affected. She comes back home, rests for a while, and goes for a prenatal yoga class in the community hall. There she meets other women, they chat about how things are changing on a daily basis, have a relaxing class and comes back home. When she's at home and she and her partner are cooking dinner, they talk about their fears and concerns regarding pregnancy and parenting. Are they going to be good parents? How are they going to handle all of this? But they talk about it. The next day, during lunch break, she gets a message from one of her friends. It says, hey, it's been a long time since we met. Do you want to catch up for lunch? She says, of course, yes, let's do it. It, make, it brings a smile on her face. Later in the evening, she gets a call from her family. They're just checking up on her, ask her how she's doing, and they plan a get together in a few weeks' time. On Friday evening, Maya and her partner, they go for an antenatal class. They meet other couples there, and the class educates and empowers them on pregnancy and choices and informed decision-making. 
they come away from the class feeling a lot more confident about themselves and this journey that they're on. On Saturday, she meets up with her friend for lunch. They chat about how what's going on in each other's lives, have a relaxing meal and have that fun girl time that she really needed. It just makes her really happy. On Sunday, Maya and her partner go for a walk and a picnic in the neighborhood park. Just being outside and in nature feels very energizing and refreshing. On Monday is her antenatal checkup. There are no rules on whether her partner can or cannot go with her. She feels like her care team treats her like a woman and not a patient. They listen to her. They respect her choices. They offer her mental health support and she says, you know what, I'm actually fine right now. I don't need it. They're like, no, it's fine. Keep her number just in case. They also give her a list of mom and baby groups in the area that she can join for peer support. Her health service team and her antenatal class gives her the confidence and strength that yes, she can do this. Maya views pregnancy as a journey with its ups and downs that she can breathe through because she has the support of her partner, her family, her peers, her workplace, her community, and her health service system. Isn't Maya's story beautiful? But it's not true though. It's not. Unfortunately, that's not the reality for women who live in our communities and around the world. When I decided to do this talk, I put out a message to women on my social media accounts asking them if you had one I wish or I hope during pregnancy that would have positively affected you, what that would be like. I was snored with responses on private message and some of them speaking about their journeys for the first time. That really humbled me, but also I felt accountable. Maya's story is my vision and the voices of women of different races, ethnicities, cultures, and religions across the world. So how can we make Maya's story a reality for women in our communities? All of us here, every single one of us here has a role that we can play. All we need to do is be mindful about how we look at motherhood. If you're a partner, physical and emotional support during pregnancy is really important. It's very normal to have concerns, fears and worries of your own. Voice them out and tackle the challenges together. If you're a friend, hang out, go out for meals, spend time together. Don't let pregnancy affect your friendship. Friends are a very important support system and also a very important part of someone's identity. We need our friends. If you're a workplace, create supportive employment policies. Women are half of your workforce. It's high time we look into that. Motherhood should not be a deciding factor for career progression for any woman. If you're a family member, Offer to be there for her. Give her the support she needs, but without overwhelming her or giving unsolicited advice. If you're a member of the community, encourage antenatal classes, doulas, hypnobirthing, and so much more in your community spaces, halls. Also, create mom and baby groups. I know some of you will tell me, but Anjali, there are mom and baby groups. We don't have enough. We need to keep creating mom and baby groups till every mother in town has a group that she can be a part of for peer support. They say it takes a village to raise a baby. Let's be that village. If you're a health service professional, treat pregnant women as women, not patients. Pregnancy is not a disease that women need saving from. Listen to them. Respect their choices. Work with them. Offer mental health support. Create a safe, secure environment where women feel open to ask questions, to be vulnerable and 
just human. Trust in the process of birth rather than over medicalizing it. All of us here, every single one of us has a role that we can play. We can make Maya's story a reality for the women in our communities if we are more mindful about how we look at motherhood. I'm going to leave you with one last thought. Could mindful motherhood be the answer to flourishing societies? Thank you.